together with new people. It's two people that haven't been on teams before, joined by two people that also haven't been on the team before. So it's uh, there's a lot that goes into it. And while I've been trying to, you know, just pull some information out of the 4AM boys, they're very quiet when it comes to comes to, 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 to pre-game talks. They want to keep it all to themselves. They want to talk about it in-game and not share too much. But, but uh, I mean, even yeah. if they did, it doesn't seem like it's really making a difference, right? No, true, for whatever true. information they're not sharing, they are just still struggling to make something happen. Even in the group stages, I mean, they they were much quieter than we thought they would be. And I think one of the big things, at least to me, in the way that we've seen them play so far, as the circle does pop up just north of Rosok, is that they're a team, even with the old roster, a team that dedicated or dedicated that decided the flow of lobbies. Every team that was around them would play 4AM PUBG because if right. you didn't adapt to what 4AM was doing, you they would have. slaughter you, essentially. And now with Xiao Pian, the former in-game leader, and HSFM, uh, but Xiao Pian, the former in-game leader from um, from New Happy joining. New Happy, I mean, they're, the finish to what was New Happy before, it was also a bit on a downhill. I mean, they, they were, again, in similar fashion to 4AM having been for a while, New Happy was the team out of China for a while and, uh, and 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 then when they weren't then they left then they broke up then they joined 4am and maybe it's down to decision making in terms of Xiao Pian and how he uh, dictates the flow of the game because they're all incredible players they're good fraggers the majority of them as well as you take a look at our top five killers here with perfectness in the top they're really 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 good players they just don't position themselves in a way where they can take advantage of their skill sets i feel like they're playing passive they're wrapping on the edges when they do fight it becomes these cluster uh, feet away here shut up for as you fell down from that i didn't even catch that when we were talking about the other teams now though circle pops as we oh. hard shift South. Now this one, my friends, is going to be a spicy one as half the circle has to go south. But I give you one question, dear Godspeed. Where are they going to go? Have <laughs> we talked about it before? These rotations would be so difficult as Deva will find Global Army wow. here as all the teams have now made their shift. And so for every team that actually decided to hedge their bets on the south will be vastly rewarded. As look at all these rotations coming yeah. in 17 has to contend with Na'Vi on the south side of Razak. They gotta group up fast because they're not gonna be the only two teams that are gonna be in Razak. Alia wraps up over, headshot connected onto Xiao Wu as he takes him down again. Alia, such a power player here through the last couple of days of play for Na'Vi. Whenever whenever, whenever Uba and Example haven't been able to get anything going, Alia has been the one saying, come on boys, we got this, we can do this. Really stepping up, rising to the occasion and fragging out. And you said it, his ability to step up and really kind of help the team where they needed it the most. Uh, I mean, the fragging powder alone from just, you know, example, yeah. Uba, obviously, so strong, but he has just been such an unstoppable force here and really kind of dragging Na'Vi to their feet. I mean, sometimes the people that wait the longest get the best result. And honestly, I feel like for Alia, this is where I saw him play as I hold that thought. I don't want to go down and chance him on him because... <sighs> Finding one, maybe more to go with Sabim trying to run on over CC. Does his name bring next in the kill feed? No, oh, the, the tree. tree granting just enough cover for him to get away to safety. Oh, that was close. But anyway, you were saying. Anyway, oh, yeah. I was saying, Ali, if we go way back when, just for a brief moment, as we probably won't have time to talk about it, um, he, he's a player that when he played for Swarm back in 19, yes, it's that far back, he was the player that anchored pretty well, that held the team together. Sure. Whenever things went wrong, he would be the one to corral the troops. And he, ever since joining Navi, didn't really have or need to have much of that sort of role, as we're seeing again, Game PT finding Sabin players running around in the open. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just phenomenal to see that now you have a roster where it's not been needed. It's not been right. needed for Alia to step up and become that player because Uber has delivered, because Mel uh, Example has delivered. Even Melman for a brief sure. moment was the fragger of the team. And now, Control, they want to play this one smart. They know that there's a good chance of this one going further south. Nice suppressive fire there for Crazy. Getting perfect X knock should allow for the rest onto Xiao Pian. That was huge. And this building actually is probably one of the better ones to play, especially because you don't have to deal with a lot of the, uh, of the apartments there. But look at how much space has been left as you're pointing out, Toby, with 4AM leaving that garden compound. There's so much room on the northeast. I mean, forests are going to be coming in, very scared of all the teams they're going to be running, running into. Soon they'll realize that there's absolutely no one up there. Jay comes 
Found his free found well, garden, yeah. his free volcano. They can stop and scout from all they want because everyone has full speed sended into the either school or into apartments, and the rest of them aren't there yet, but will probably commit to the same because there's no good reason to imagine that the East is free at this point. No, because of the circle and because of that hard shift as well. And I mean, as you said, even though there's water, garden, uh, that eight pack compound should still very much be in, at least yeah. on the very edge. And so everyone has opted to try to get into the apartments as we now see D plus key as well, rotating alongside Ooh. him in tandem of Iarina. Sprays coming out as 17 gets wiped by Mel and Uba on the right side of your screen. Finally able to clear out at least the southwest side of Rushok. That's going to allow for Navi to spread out a little bit more as the fights continue. Now it's down towards the southern side. A state trade and DT team battle one another. Iarina have made landfall here, but we go up towards the hillsides of Potato Hill. Two down on the side of Day Trade, one down on the side of DD Team. DD Team hasn't really gotten anything going at all this tournament so far, so maybe a full on flush on Day Trade could be the start for them. Two teams that actually. Oh, that was such a disgusting angle there. Just through the wood pieces on the backside as Day Trade now just down to Norens. Again, just. I Game after game, they have found struggles, and Spaceman will find it. DD Team will cleanly wipe Day Trade. And welcome to the highlights, DD Team. We've been waiting for you the entire tournament again. I mean, if they can corral around this, there was no kills on the side of Mamu this entire fight. They instantly pop up, take their focus to Expendable, to rightly so slowly start creeping up this hillside, but it's into Arena or, or into Arena, into Apartment, sorry, all towards school, because again, little do they know, Garden is free, but no one's, I mean, no one's even looking that way. Yeah, everyone but it's just rotating past. I'm curious if one of those teams is going to realize the fact that it is free is D plus Kia will now get absolutely anni annihilated as the expendables there are those wave compounds taking shots. And now look at this crash after crash, just driving right into apartments or the two-story near it. <laughs> Hush tries to quickly jump on and jumps into fire, gets exploded while doing so. And look at the kill feed pop off here as now Navi tries to wrap over the top of the hill too, but they have expendables over on their side as well. Once again, though, 4M able to reset. The team has really been struggling this tournament so far. And in particular, here in the loser's bracket as well, as we started off the day, only a couple of points. But uh, maybe their center position now can transfer into a good game. And Forrest have actually realized that <laughs> that compound is free as now the Expendables getting on the back side of where Navi is. They hear the nade. They're going to abandon Uba for the time being. And they're going to pour over. Duck is just going to try to get the spray to Mel. He won't find it. And they're going to be a little bit of a reset. Oh, but Delwin with the P90 will get the flush. And Hailu from the other side heard the commotion. They saw the knocks in the kill feed too, and they wanted to take action here. Smart decision making on their part. If they can clear out Rasak, then they can focus on pushing out themselves. They didn't have a good spot before, but now with Navi almost done for, they should be just fine. Exam below, still a hurdle, still a threat for the remaining Hailu players to deal with. The thing that still impresses me though, the Expendables making all the right decisions. Is almost gets two. He had him. 18 HP, he had it, but he clicked. He ran out of ammo. You can see his reaction too. Expendables has to commit to this one. There's two knock players down below. Issue is, do you dare? Could you even get down no, there in time? It's not worth. No, it's just not worth it. it. Can't do it. It's dangerous to fully commit because as soon as you push down, the holds up close to what has just been this DDT push. One nade over could be an entire team wide. Yeah, they actually set up so beautifully for this. The Expendables again were aware and they backed up to the south while still leaving Delwin on the north. Is so proactive. I love it from this team. Pretty smart decision making issues while DD team could wrap around before pretty safely. As soon as they get out of the car, the arena said, yeah, we're not going to allow it to just run around over there. Once they drove off, Irina knew there's no one left behind us. We can now start flexing out. We can now start claiming control. And DD team, the first team in their crosshairs as Expendables push forward. They are just getting peppered as well, as you said, from e Arena, And they're backing up now as they realize the majority of the work is being done by e Arena. There's no reason for them to commit too hard as it's just Emo Pig now. And he is going to be taken out cleanly by the Expendables. And all this is only happening because Delwyn single-handedly contains Ty right. Lu. Had he not been up there, up on the top of Rossock Hill, the entire team would be in so much trouble. But with the P90 in hand, he's been able to suppress the entirety of Ty Lu. And Ty Lu is just going to be okay with it, seemingly. There are three players up here. They have 755 down behind. They're outside the next circle, but have not really been in a hurry to try and make a play despite seeing Expendables kills in the kill. Look at this. They're just sat here waiting it out. And again, this is not the Tai Lu we saw in groups. I mean, no. Shen, Xiaoyang, they're out there dominating the server. And now it's as if they're 
again, playing it a bit more safe to use Patulan's words. People know there's lots of risk if you don't finish up eight here in the loser's bracket. The biggest problem, though, is the fact that Twisted Minds would have been able to dictate that fight quite handily as they're yeah. now pulling off to the side oh. of school. And then just getting dominated by Lou. And Long's actually the one to be the benefactor. He's going to steal all of these kills. Yep, trying to claim as much as he can. As, uh, is that his own need? I think it is. <laughs> he just took himself out. Yeah, I'm not going to make it anyway. I don't know if he tried to lob it over the wall, maybe to bounce back, but that did not work out for him whatsoever. Delvin, in the meantime, tries to get down. Yeah. Not going to work out. Expendables out. And Tai Lu now, again, well aware that they are in all kinds of control towards the north. Instantly after, though, E Arena pushes in from the south side, so Twisted Minds has to react quickly. They've been defending so well for multiple angles. That nade's going to land very close. Not enough damage, but... It does do enough to kind of stave off this push as KM99 will be the only one to make it in the wall, but Perfectus will jump over like a Spider-Man just coming from above. He landed on his face and took him out instantly. He had nine kills in the previous game. He has five kills here. Perfectus is on a tear. That man just came over like, what's up? Yeah, just full on. It's your auditorial style as Twisted Minds. I feel like, fair enough, they like they sweep off like that. They get the circle too. <laughs> Why not? Why not? But I do. I will say though, for the Expendables, for all those good plays, I wish they had just committed to the fight against Tai Lu instead of going for that. That yeah. just pretty much put them in, in view of Tai Lu as well as contending with Twisted Minds. Now we're giving Twisted Minds a circle and a MG3, though. I feel like we're, it's getting a bit out of hand it's at this a point. Now let, let's, guys, guys. Look give. at the bunch up in apartments, though, <laughs> yep. Toby. Yep, it's going to be wild, no doubt. And think for Twisted Minds is the IGL is sat over there, too. I'm not sure that Petulins currently has a plan of how do I get back to my teammates? Because he's well aware there's opponents everywhere. And Friendly Fire now, they wants to push Petricor. This is this is what uh, I just I'm getting anxiety just thinking about pushing all these apartments, clearing it floor by floor, not even you know having to deal with the fact that blue zone grenades were a thing back yeah. when I was playing. And so yeah, this just becomes such a claustrophobic affair as every single building needs to be cleared. Otherwise, you are bound to have snakes backstab you, and that is it's just the worst feeling, especially fighting in this area. Petrico is down to two, so good that Shuri is able to at least buy his teammates some sort of time upstairs. Mill sat there trying to fend off against anything coming his way. Pixel should be able to get rest here. Now Tai Lu driving full speed forward. He tried to time it right, but no one's really making a play just yet. And here comes Tai Lu full speed forward. Long's first one to fall. The rest of the team make lane fall, though. They will at the very least, yeah, as you said, make it to the north side of this, this kind of fence, this wall. But Forrest also with a nice angle, which is going to push them on the west side, which Twisted is very ready to defend. Yeah, definitely are. Tai Lu, I feel like they have to somehow try and push if not to get inside the school proper, then then make space for themselves. They need to force Forrest to look the other way. And if they just stay prone like this, I'm worried that one nade from a teammate that pushes out could be the death, a downfall of them. Because no one can contain, like no one can deny Twisted Minds to play on the east side of this building right now. Especially with the way, I mean, just Perfectus alone is just an absolute animal right now. Yeah. Six kills in this game. He almost they had nine in one of the previous. I mean, he is absolutely on fire. And another player on fire from Friendly Fire has been Pixel 1K. Yeah. Definitely so. Only one kill this one, but has impressed us time and time again. As now Friendly Fire try to wrap back around the northern side of this one. Are they going to take a car? Are they going to play it on foot? I feel like they have to play foot here. Issue is, as the uh, the team moves further forward, they have four M set right in front of them. Crash. Pixel is now starting to realize that this might not have been the best direction to run. No, oh, open a knock okay. from Sharp all of a sudden now. Could open the door at least for... Oh, never mind. They just got shredded in the blue. Yeah, they tried to wrap, out, uh, wrap down on the southern side. The knock came through from... Um, from Chewy early enough for them to reconsider. Then when they try to wrap back down south, it, or north, I mean, it just, it, it wasn't meant to be. There's simply too many people looking in their direction and they were the only team that had to make a play. That nade from Lu is now going to create quite a bit of pressure. The blue zone grenade as well. And Tai Lu has not been able to move as Lu is going to track this quite accurately. Ooh! Through! What is that? The nade throws! That the is in the way so of Tino. Lucky, and this is what I was just talking about. If they don't somehow manage to spread at least just a little bit of fear to, to long, Twisted yeah. Minds, if they just sit out there on the back side of the wall, there's nothing they can do to deny Twisted Minds a push to get within Nate range, and therefore they fall. True now, solo player for his team is sat here looking at Batulins <laughs> trying to fend off against the entirety of Luminosity. As Kickstart, the first one to fall, and look at the space that he has to work with, is practically nothing. You gotta move faster than that, Chewie is. 
He's still very What's much the in plan the blue. Here? Yeah, what is his plan? LG desperately trying to fight against just a one-man army here of Batulin. Well, he's just going to... Okay, he's just going to deny the point, I guess. Top five guaranteed. Why not? Yeah, that's something. In the meantime, now Batulin's against the remaining three players of Luminosity. It's going to try and... Uh, it's going to try and IGL while also fending off... Uh, against a pretty formidable force of players downstairs. He's outside the next circle, he's gonna have to make a play eventually. But how, oh how, my friend, are you planning on getting out of this building alive? Maybe, I don't think he does, as long as he can <laughs> yeah, just maybe get rid of L LG. I yeah, get some points here and... They can't go up there, yeah, they can't go up at all. But Tulin's set up above, they're trying to smoke a path forward. Maybe there's a play for him to make oh, dozen of it illegal. And he's twisted by Look at the angle that they have, they can defend him down below. Shots ring on through as Flood and Relo fall right after one another. And Batulins will finally fall, but the amount of damage he was able to do was just so devastating to the side of LG. And now, realistically, it's 4EM that needs yeah. to make the move up towards Forest. As Forest has been sitting at that check, fortified for quite a while, as Stakers will fall to the blue. So many smokes deployed, so hard to really see where you are, where you're going. And now, as you were saying, 4EM, they want to take the fight to Forest first. They know that Twisted Minds is in a position from where they will easily take them out if they run straight up the hill. So they have to somehow take out Forest without any casualties. Then Reset, then take the fight to Twisted Minds, but they won't let him have it. Yeah, and again, just the amount of position and dominance we've seen from Twisted Minds holding school as a three man for this long is beyond impressive. As 4EM is getting shredded right across this road between not only Forrest, but as well as Twisted. Yeah, somehow still alive in this one as Perfectix claims kill number eight. He's at over 1100 damage in this game. There's no stopping him once he gets going. And this one it could just be written home. Else a win for Twisted Minds, but it ain't over just yet. Oh, 12 kills now as 4EM just trying to stay alive. Crazy will go down. Olympus will find him. And it's going to be Perfectus, of nine course. Kills. Why not to finish off another nine kill game from this absolute beast of a player? Nine kills, 1300 damage, make that almost 1400. We're looking at a record breaking performance at a global stage here. Twisted Minds, we had ourselves doubting whether they were going to be able to make anything happen after their group stage performance they did not look comfortable but Batulin said it earlier we have to play smart and what's smarter than letting your top fragger go out and do what he does here disgusting amount of damage <laughs> not even just him Lou also getting some kills Spyro as well the fact that they again have been able to defend school alone without any help as Scappy does make it across 14. but now Muto what are you gonna do in this situation absolutely insane performance now I know they haven't had to fight too much up close but they have. Perfectus was the one tasked with defending the school down towards the southwest side. Every time a team full-on pulled up on them, it was him standing up against them. E Arena came and he jumped into their face and took them out 1v3. But now, here we are between the final two teams. Forrest, do you have it in you to take out Twisted Minds when they're this warm? Oh, until somehow miraculously makes that cross. So now in the north wall of school, and they're going to be able to spread out fairly well here. But look at Lou. He's Lou ridden. has already read this, and he has the MG3 as well. 66 rounds, but that is more than enough to take at least one, if not two knocks, if not all three. Definitely. Look at the HP on the side of Forrest as well. They have nothing to work with. I'm not seeing Munzo heal at all, so I don't even think he has got anything either. They're changing some this, and now, finally, finally, Mets are being deployed, but Lou ain't peeking just yet. He's going to want to, I think, really. Like, I think he wants his teammates to try and distract yes. so that they can then swing around the corner. And again, the setup here from Twisted is just so devastating for the team of Forest. He's waiting for the circle to close in. They have no clue he's there. No, they don't. Once the circle closes in, they're going, why would there be anyone backstabbing us? Lou is going to get a double in just a second. Simon's going to be looking very, very good because Scappy and Munzo has absolutely no and idea what's about away. to hit him. Yeah. So now he's going to get a free angle and he's going to find one. Potentially, Scappy is down to one HP on his belly as the vehicle explodes and gives him a better angle, but he is, at the very least, for the time being, hide behind that be buggy. He's oh, but this nade. He's down. No heals as well. That's, That's going to be him knocked. And now Olympus left alive. Do we get Perfect X into double digits or do we not? Spiro hurt him vault in. Are they going to give it to him? Are they just going to want to hunt it? Are they just going to want to secure this one? Olympus is hearing all the steps up above. If there's a place these players are used to fighting up close, that is school. This is where they go in all their noble games, all their practice games, into school to hot drop. Let's see if he can somehow pull off a 1v3 miracle. kills. Look how aware Twisted has been throughout this whole game. Lou now could uh -oh. potentially even just throw away his life just to make sure that they know exactly where Olympus is. He and he is going <laughs> to deny to the blue very wide.
Rise has twisted minds with an insane performance here in the first game of Rango. Look at this miles of effect as he knows. Closing in on 1,500 damage. 18 kills by one player in just 